It was like the main street in a small town on a Saturday night. You know, every, everything was there. Anything that was happening in that town was happening there. Ramble Street, uh, it's got a lot of hype. It's a really good idea to close the roads down. The reason why they do that is because this is the place where everybody drinks. And they would start out the show with saying the CBC is pleased to present the music of Dal Richards and his orchestra from the panorama roof high atop the Hotel Vancouver overlooking the twinkling harbor lights of Canada's gateway to the Pacific, featuring the piano stylings of Bud Henderson and the song stylings of Juliet. It's music by the band at the top of the town. Well, that took us into our theme song. But what I subsequently learned that people listening to this week after week in places like Swift Current or Sudbury or in the dead of winter thought, why am I living here? It sounds like heaven out there. And, and a lot of people actually moved out here after considerations uh, because of hearing that. They thought it sounded like heaven, which of course it is. We all know that. <laughs> Neon was just was such a big thing. Granville Street was just wonderful. It was just a marvelous when it lit up. But it wasn't just the theaters. There, every restaurant uh, had some sort of uh, sign outside. The, you know, big color sign. Then in the windows or just jutting out the thing. A lot of the time you wouldn't know what the, what movie you're going to. Well, I wouldn't and I'd have been too shy. But I say I asked Margaret Chan if she wants to go to a movie tonight. Saturday night, Margaret, we're going, would you like to go off to the movies? But we'd walk down and we'd look at the, look at the movies. We'd do it. They all started at the same time. They'd all start probably at 7 or 7.30. Uh, we'd walk down the street and look at the marquee and look at what, what the movie was about. We'd know something about it because somebody had talked to us. And then we'd decide that we'd go in that one. So we sort of patrol Granville Street, look at the movies and go in. But people were just walking up and down. Cranville Street, mainly because other people were there. I'm Mark Zealand, and I've been a bartender on uh, Granville Street for the past seven years. It's been a nightlife scene for about 13. And most people, they either go out to drink or get laid, and that would be like Caprice or Republic or Bar None. Um, some of those places are probably the most popular. And of course, the Roxy. And I don't know why, because I hate that place, but everybody loves the Roxy. This is how, how the Hoochies dance. They, they come up and they've got all this stuff on there like, uh, oh yeah, oh. And that's it, they don't even move. The girls, they, they're, they're so dressed up, they just, uh, hey, oh. But that's what they do. As soon as they get out, as soon as they get their license to drink, they're insane. They don't know how to handle their alcohol. The girls do really stupid stuff. The guys, they either want to fight or fuck. And if they can't get laid by around 2 o'clock, they want to fight. I'm working a, a Lima or liquor call out uh, tonight. We had an altercation here in the 1100 block of Granville Street. Uh, as happens on uh, Granville Street quite often, at the end of the night, uh, we have a bunch of intoxicated males who yeah, exit the bars and uh, attempt to uh, pick up girls. Unfortunately, uh, many of these girls are already with guys. And what happened on this corner is that uh, a couple of girls were standing around. Uh, they were approached by males given uh, some unwanted attention and when they were asked to uh, to leave and leave the girls alone, uh, the, the males became belligerent and angry and actually assaulted one of the girls. I can't remember very much um, fighting. You know, I don't, I don't think we, we argued or fought or, well, we certainly weren't shooting anybody. I don't know why, what the reasons would be. You know, maybe, maybe it's because if anything happened, you're in court the next day instead of, <laughs> instead of three years from now. Must be first. Are you alright? He's fine. Yeah. See, never a dull moment. You get that? None of there were no. None of the sort of meat market bars that there are now are singles uh, bars because 
up until 1952, as I'm sure you're aware, the, the, there was no legalized drinking where you could just walk in and, and have a drink. People who came to the roof used to bring their own bottle. And uh, fancy containers were available for it, a zippered suede pouch and that sort of thing, so you just didn't have to bring a brown paper bag. And uh, it would be under the table and they'd pour their drinks, and every club was the same. They sold mixer and ice, you brought your own bottle. There used to be raids on the clubs every, every so often. They were called raids, but they really weren't. The police just took a stroll through and maybe lifted a tablecloth or two. I never heard of anybody being arrested. But we had a way of, of alerting our, our patrons to the fact that they were coming because, of course, they had to come through the lobby of the hotel and up 15 floors to the roof. Well, in doing so, they'd have to pass the bellman's desk downstairs. Bellman would phone the head waiter in the roof and alert him. And I would stop the band of whatever we were playing and break in to roll out the barrel. And that was that was the signal. <laughs> Hide your bottle. <laughs> it worked too. That skirt is almost around her waist. <laughs> Not too obviously. Yeah. It's like around her waist. You give me a crotch wedgie. Ah! 